it's another Elden Ring video. You're, you're shocked, I can tell. But in today's video, we are here in front of Godwin. Say hello, Godwin. You smell you fuck. And we're here in front of Godwin for Fia. Say hello, Fia. Now her and along with everything else I'm going to do in this video is basically all part of my last minute cleanup slash prep for the DLC that I mentioned I was going to do in my last video. Now this video would have come out yesterday. However, uh, in order to do everything that I actually wanted to do in this video, I, I realized I had not done everything that I had not gone through all the areas that I needed to. So basically I've done everything in the game up until a certain point and everything that I didn't do, I'm going to do in this video. So uh, along with Fia's quest line, which I'm doing to uh, get her rune to do her ending, I'm going to be fighting Fordisax, Rykard, Fire Giant, and Moog. And I'm, I'm now realizing, saying, that out loud that uh, these bosses either have some significance to the DLC in some way potentially you know Fortisax is related to Fia and Godwin which is related to Mikola because you know uh, Mikola and Godwin are like half brothers or whatever and you know there's the whole eclipse thing that he was trying to do to resurrect Godwin and his soul and then the fire giant which is uh, more so loosely related to uh, Melina because after you beat the fire giant you go to the kiln and everything that happens at the kiln affects whether or not Melina is still in your game or not, which in turn could affect any potential happenings in the DLC that may or may not include her. And Rykard, a lot of stuff in the DLC is like, seems to be like very Volcano Manor-esque and Rykard pilled, you know, Mesmer, especially with all the like fire and snake imagery. And then obviously we have Moog, which is a required boss fight in order to enter the DLC. Basically, these are, these are all either uh, like relevant bosses to the like the lore or they're just really cool boss fights that I wanted to put in a video so I figured this would be a entertaining send off to the pre DLC era of Elden Ring also with the souls that I gained from killing a bunch of like side bosses in the areas that I had to go through in order to get this video like prepared I was able to uh, get these stat requirements to use the golden order great sword which I actually have on that other character that I showed a few videos ago so I'm not sure if this is viable because you're like splitting three different types of damage across two weapons but I mean it looks cool so I I don't really care. Also, the uh, random uh, Elden Ring character OC lore. My character has one golden eye and one blue eye. I'm not really sure what that means in this dumb made up thing that I made up in my mind, but it is aesthetically fitting. So, but uh, yeah, that's enough rambling. If you do enjoy this video and want to help support the channel, however, then leaving a like and subscribing would be very much appreciated. The DLC is about two months away at this point. I think it comes out in June. Hold on, wait, when does the DLC come out? I need to look this up before I look stupid. Oh god, oh no, I'm stupid. I thought the DLC came out in two months. It actually comes out in three. Oh no, I forgot May was a month. Ah. Oh, well, with that super damper note, let's just go touch this lady so I can kill this super cool dragon. That is that's so deeply upsetting. <laughs> this is definitely a Miyazaki video game. Also, what's up? Alright, bitch. Is this death play gonna go away at any point? Also, I'm not sure at what point you're actually supposed to fight this boss, but now I'm basically like right near the end of the game. This whole like storyline and boss setup is very Artorius and Sif coded. Ow. Oh, that's going straight down. I thought that was going to go. Oh, God, he's so cool. And it kind of sucks that they never brought back the tail cutting, get a weapon mechanic from DS1. But at the same time, it was kind of annoying to do on some of the dragon enemies in that game. Ow. Holy frostbite, Batman. Holy frostbite, Batman. Also, I figured I'd put this boss fight in the video, even though it's not like super lore related. It's just, it's a really cool boss fight that not a lot of people do. Holy shit, that's so cool looking. Ow. Thank you, Morgoth's Great Rune. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm slightly overpowered for this boss fight, but you know what? That's fine. Holy death blight, Batman. Yeah, because of all the, like, intersecting quest lines you have to do. And all the various fail states that exist. Because of how, like, intersecting they are. Holy shit, that's so cool looking. Ow. 
Ow. Ow. You know what? Fuck you. Oh! What am I doing? All right, that did not do as much damage as I thought it was going to, but to be perfectly honest, he's probably resisted the holy. But yeah, my, my, my point being is that this boss fight is very hard to miss because of everything you have to do to get to it. Even though it's probably one of the coolest boss fights in the whole game. No! Oh my god, holy hitbox. What? Excuse me? Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> wow, that is so much damage. Neat. Also, the sky looks like the sky that you get in the uh, Dung Eater ending. It's just like a slightly different color. So I'm not sure what that says about the weird fucked up hell mindscape that we were currently in. But yeah, the story with Fortis Axe and Godwin is super cool. How Godwin befriends Fortis Axe and then Fortis Axe after Godwin is death blighted all the shit. I don't, I'm not really sure how the mechanics of this work. It's not really important, I guess. But the idea that like Fortis Axe is in this mine palace thing to try and help Godwin in some way. Kind of like a Dark Eater Medeer type situation. Also, she's dead now, I guess. Or maybe she's just sleeping. But uh, yeah, here, here's the great rune. Yoink. Now, if we sit down right here. Yep, there he is. Justice writ in blood. This is what's become of your precious witch. Naught but expired meat and bone. This is a proper death, O oh Prince. Look at this rotten hole. No more children can be got from this useless flesh. Behold, your mother is dead. <laughs> This is revenge, you witch. And you, you ghoul. This is the wrath of D. Ah, hello. The rotten witch is dead. The golden order on Sully. Oh, you sweet summer child. All right, well, I'll grab this, I guess. Um, Yeah, do all the fucking golden order shitheads. Like, does he even, does he understand that this is like godwin the like the son of the god of his entire or like does he like none of them understand this and like they're over, they're here like trying to get rid of flaws quote unquote you know those who live in death when the existence of them disproves the entire idea that the order is perfect in the first place oh if i sit down will he will he be gone i kind of wanted to inescapable frenzy him oh well whatever anyways you have to die now sir you killed the only woman in the world who ever helped me die All right, now that that moron is dead, um, we can now go do... I guess we'll go do Record actually. Uh, which one is he at? Is it this one? No, it's this one. But yeah, in closer and getting to the, uh, closer to the end of the game, I remember uh, I asked that question, like, rhetorically, of why is there Ash and Landell already if I haven't burned the Erd Tree yet in terms of, you know, like, the game chronology. And, uh, I totally didn't realize that, uh, the burning of the Erd Tree, you know, all the, uh, finger... Reader crones refer to it as the uh, first cardinal sin, which is implying that it's something that somebody has already done. Because, you know, how could there be a first sin if nobody had done the thing in the first place? You know, there's all these uh, theories going around that Mesmer was uh, the one who had burned the Erd Tree the first time, you know, all, with all the anti Golden Order Erd Tree fire imagery that he has. But yeah, I guess for this, I should actually unequip both of these and uh, walk through here. Hello, Serpent Hunter, my beloved. Also, I love how this has its own unique animation. Now, this is a gimmick fight like uh, Yorm the Giant or the Storm Lord, I think it's called, from Demon Souls. And to me, this is probably my favorite version of this fight just because of like the weapon and the boss and the spectacle. Like, look at this room. It's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see if Mesmer has any sort of relation to Rykard or Volcano Manor, like at all, because a lot of the stuff in the trailer seemed to be reminiscent of that. 
Also, it's cool that unlike the other versions of this boss fight, you would do that move first. You f uh, unlike the other versions of this fight that have this unique gimmick weapon. The entire move set of this weapon is augmented for the boss fight, not just like a special attack. Ow! Oh my god! Holy shit! He's doing all of his annoying moves at the same time. That was close. Have you considered not doing this to me? Now, what if I do this? So there's a really interesting thing. I don't know if they ever fixed this, but if you do the uh, left trigger attack, but you don't do the like the full combo, I died because I'm dumb. Um, I remember if you do the left trigger attack, but you only do the first attack repeatedly, so you know you don't do the full combo with it. Uh, you can just like repeatedly stun lock the boss with it. I think they fixed that at some point, but I remember the first time I fought the boss, that's what I did just instinctively because I thought the weapon worked like the original Storm Ruler where it had one left trigger attack. Also, where my souls I actually need those. I'll go grab that really quick. I love how the boss doesn't aggro you until you get close to it. That's actually very considerate. But yeah, the funny thing too is that you can actually upgrade this weapon as well and it will do more damage, even though it's totally not necessary at all. Now, what if I do it again? They, they seemingly fixed that. Oh, I didn't cast Golden Vow. I made it, I did an oopsie daisy. Oh, there you go. All right, well, time to do this. Might as well. I knocked him down. Oh, I got grabbed. I'm probably going to die. Oh, wow, I'm surprised that doesn't do two hits of damage. That's very generous. That attack sucks. I have no idea how to avoid it. Ow. You fuck. Why am I against the wall here? That's not an attack I normally see. Please die. Oh my god, how did that miss? Die. I will now drink this. And get ready for the greatest cutscene of all time. I remember I lost my mind when I saw this for the first time. <laughs> also, I don't know why, but the cutscenes in this game are super weird. Like, when a scene ends, it'll, like, freeze for a second and then go to the next scene like that. It's so weird. I also like how his face, like, Play-Dohs into existence. Hello. Oh, very well. I like how it's like we just woke him up from a nap. <laughs> Why does the cutscenes do that in this game? It's so annoying. Also, this is metal as shit. That's gross. Also, I would like to point out that the, this weapon is called the Serpent Hunter, which uh, obviously this serpent is not dead. So that's either implying it was named for this single purpose. This is the best cutscene in the game. Um, uh, so that means it was like designed for the singular purpose that it was like designated for, or that there was a serpent that it was already used on. And obviously, Eagle A slash Rikard here are still very much alive, so. Also, I love how this is still like an actual boss fight and it's not just a gimmick fight. Oh my god. Also, I love how Armageddon is occurring above the boss arena. Oh, it's too far.
All right, time to run away now. This boss fight is so cool. It's so ridiculous and stupid. I love it. Oh my God. Ow. Miyazaki, when is it dead? What is that? Oh my God. Did he heal from that? It'd be funny if he did. Please die. Dumb bitch. How about you fuck off, loser? Oh. Oh, that was cheeky. Die. Boop. Yeah, this is definitely the best version of this boss fight that they've ever done. Whatever you say, record. But uh, yeah, there's all this snake imagery that is associated with like blasphemy and like anti urgery stuff that seems to predate Rikard, especially with like the twin red snakes that we saw in the uh, DLC trailer. But I think it's the Depraved Perfumers outfit that has that on it. So by the way, I'm just here going this way so I can do uh, Raya's quest line. But um, I should mention that in doing this DLC prep stuff, um, I'm also preventing myself from going to the uh, Halig tree and also going past the fire kiln because of the aforementioned potential uh, Melina and Melania stuff that might happen as a result of DLC shenanigans but with all that said and done i think the next one i'm gonna go do is the where is it the fire giant i'm, I'm curious whether i should uh summon alexander or not because that's super cool that you can do that but also i don't want to fight the fire giant with like more health than it already has which is a stupid amount and uh, like i mentioned i'm going to fight the fire giant and you know kill it and whatever but i'm not gonna go actually to the kiln and you know do all that with melina Holy shit, that's so metal. All the giant skeletons that are bigger than the giant giants that are here. Like, what the hell happened here? It's so cool looking. But yeah, speaking of, you know, the mountaintops and the kill and everything. I'm, it's funny, uh, you know, when you get to the mountaintops, you meet Shabriri who tells you about the uh, three fingers and the sewers and whatnot. And he tells you to, you know, go do that instead of burning your maiden and i didn't realize this because i was always like confused as to why melina never mentions anything about shabriri or that at all like when you go down to the sewer she'll be like hey the frenzy flame is down here don't mess with that it's bad but i never knew she like referenced the idea that you might not want to burn her in the giant's kiln now granted she still never mentions shabriri by name you know, the main reason why you would even be concerned about that in the first place is because he tells you. But yeah, there's several points where, you know, you can talk to Melina at specific spots and she'll talk about how, you know, this is something that she wants to do. And while originally her purpose was given to her by Marika, she is now like dead set on, you know, doing this herself of her own volition and everything. And also like the whole like three fingers dialogue that she has about the frenzy flame and everything kind of makes me wish that she was like around more as a character instead of just at the uh, specific spots and the uh, churches and everything. But, you know, uh, Elden Ring is not, her Souls games are not like super super character driven so i get it but it, it's still it would have been cool to like sort of break that what's the word you know one time with uh melina you know mainly just because of the stuff that she does say that is not just the church dialogue is like really like compelling you know with the three fingers and how she's like you know she gets emotional when she talks about it it's super cool but uh, anyways i'm done rambling let's go walk in here and fight this really awesome and well-designed boss also here's alexander i'm in the pot I'm going to try to do it by myself first, and then if I get really annoyed and don't want to deal with this, then I'll summon Alexander. Hello, well-designed boss fight. Also, I have a plus 10 mimic tier just in case. I don't think I'll need him, but... Or her.
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't... It, it's been said a million times, but the most annoying part about this boss fight is when he, like, rolls away and everything. It's very not cash money. Oh. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, I didn't spend my souls. Fuck. So what are you doing up there? I don't know if it's still possible to do this, but I remember uh, people getting the fire giant to die from fall damage because there's like a small hill in the boss arena that is just tall enough that it counts as like lethal fall damage. Because despite the fact that he's like literally gigantic, I guess the parameters for fall damage are the same for every enemy in the game, regardless of how their size. Where are my souls at? Oh, they're right here. All right, you little shit. Oh, I forgot the cast gold of loud, so I'm just gonna eat a shrimp. Can you not use that? Fuck you. Oh my god, is that thing gonna explode or not? Holy shit. Yeah, this boss fight isn't too bad. Oh. There you go. I remember being very confused and also very, like, just, like, awestruck when this happened. It comes so out of left field. Also, there, there's this theory uh, that went around after the DLC trailer came out where, uh, you know, all the giants and trolls and stuff are, like, impaled uh, on the way to the mountaintops. And uh, people are assuming that Mesmer had something to do with that because he's called Mesmer the Impaler. Also, are we ever going to get an answer to what the flame of the fell god is or whatever this thing is called and why it has the jupiter shit in its eye probably not it looks cool though also it's neat that he takes tons of damage from this holy shit die well that worked out Oh, that's bad. Die. Yeah, this is a very bombastic and cinematic fight. Oh, there's two of them now. Oh, that's bad. I should probably just, like... Oh. You know, that was probably for the best. There we go. Well, having a projectile on your sword is like super useful. <laughs> first try. Now I will not be walking up that. I remember the first time I went up there, I thought you had to go in the like middle of it. So I jumped inside of it and I died. I can't be the only person who did that, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm astonished. Honestly, I thought that was gonna take me more than one try, but you know what? We take those. I really don't like walking around with a hundred thousand runes, but I don't have enough runes to get another level. So you know what? Whatever. It's fine. I mean, I just realized I'm not using any of my physic. I have it set up specifically to do more magic and holy damage and I'm, I'm not using it. But with the fire giant taken care of, we have one more stop to make. Now, thankfully you can walk behind all these people and they will not notice you. Now I'm going to be honest. The fire giant was an unexpected, but you know, a victory. 
I get the distinct feeling that that is not going to be the case with Moog. I think Moog is probably like the most difficult fight for me in the game. I remember the last time that I did it, I was very frustrated, but uh, you know what, actually, let me go back down here really quick. Now, I don't think my FP bar is big enough to do this. However, let me put this on. I can't put both of these on, can I? What? You can put both, do these stack? Oh, there's no way these stack. What? You can put both of them on? All right, fuck it. We ball, I guess. Now, I have the uh, magic damage and the uh, infinite FP tier mixed into my flask. And basically, this is like a all else fails strategy because uh, if I don't kill him on one shot and he starts to knee heal, then I am not going to be protected. Now, granted, I can just heal through it, but uh, whether or not I do sufficient damage enough to make any decent progress or outright kill him is going to depend greatly on uh, whether or not I do enough damage or have enough FP or whether I'm not I'm cl even close enough, but we'll see. Because, yeah, uh, Comet Zero does not have infinite range, so I'm going to have to uh, wait for him to get slightly closer to do anything. Also, yeah, I figured I'd uh, have the final boss of the video be the one that is required to enter the DLC in the first place. And is, you know, directly correlated to Mikola considering you know he's sitting in the egg also it's funny they, they reuse Morgoth's like a uh, near-death model after you beat him for a uh, Mikola in the egg it's very funny you're not supposed to be able to see what he looks like inside the egg but if you like clip into the egg with like mod tools you can see that it's the same model Now, this boss fight is very cool. However, if I can comment as your him, that would be hilarious and funny because I've never done it before. Dearest Mikola. You must abide alone a while. Welcome, honored guest. To the birthplace of our dynasty. Yeah, I'm very confused as to why this interaction results in a boss fight, but you know, whatever, it's fine. Now, what if I do? No, not that. I do this. I do this. And then I, I do this. I think he's too close. How far is that gonna go? All right, well, we didn't kill him, but I mean. I just, I straight up just don't think my FP bar is big enough. Ow. Also, the last time I fought this boss was when I streamed it like a year ago, so. I'm sure this will only go well. Although the Moonlight Gracer is very good in this game, so. Unlike regular enemies, he cannot dodge this. As clear as day. The coming of our dynasty. More quit. Wow. Okay. Holy shit. Tom. <laughs> Holy shit, he gives you a ton of runes. Uh, well, fuck, I was not expected to do that on my first try. Holy shit. You know, part of me is kind of sad that I couldn't, like, Commodore Zero one-shot him. Because that would have been, like, 
funny, funny, haha meme. But part of me is also glad that I was able to like use it in the fight and then also still like fight him, quote unquote. Now, granted, my I still got carried by fucking the Moonlight Greatsword because it's insane in this game. But uh, yeah, uh, with that, uh, I've done basically all the cleanup that I need to do before I do the DLC, which uh, comes out, as I said, in about uh, three months. I thought it was two. It makes me very sad that I don't know how to count. But, but uh, there was this theory going around um, once again after the DLC came out. You know, every uh, everybody knows the story about how Mikola was, you know, growing the Halic tree. And, you know, it was a safe haven for, you know, all things shunned by the Golden Order and everything. And uh, how Moog ripped him out of it as it was growing and as he was uh, assumingly ascending to some sort of godhood or whatever. And uh, it's it's like painted as this like very unfortunate and tragic thing that, that occurred. But uh, there is this theory going around that maybe... Uh, because Mikola is known as to be like very like charismatic and you know everybody loves him and everything like that and maybe he had Moog do this to him on purpose because uh, we know that in order to enter the Shadowlands he had to resign himself of like his lineage and his flesh and all that so maybe in order to enter the Shadowlands to do whatever he needs to do in the DLC he had to have something like this happened to him. So maybe he had Moog do this intentionally and had himself intentionally kidnapped. And everybody seems to think of Mikola as a sort of Griffith-esque mastermind. And uh, I'll be honest, I would kind of suck if like Mikola ends up being like sort of like evil. I would like there to be one god character in a FromSoft game that is not an evil piece of shit. But so far from what I remember, that does has never been the case in any of Miyazaki's games, but maybe Mikola will change that. It would be nice to have someone be somewhat optimistic in one of these games. But uh, yeah, with all that said and done, that's going to be the end of my uh, pre-DLC Elden Ring adventures. And it's going to be so weird playing the DLC when it comes out and then on this character specifically going through the rest of the end game because uh, this is my third playthrough of the game so far. And then uh, my two previous characters I've already like beaten the the whole game with, you know, gone through and killed the Elder Beast and everything. So I'll be curious to see if like my presumptions about there being potential melina and melania anything comes to fruition like i said i do apologize for this video coming out uh somewhat late i did want it to go up yesterday but again i had to do a lot more prep and play through to get to like the fire giant and uh Rikard. so i also remember i said i was gonna make a guilty gear video and that was going to be the next video but then i decided i wanted to do this instead so it will probably be a guilty gear video in the next few days but uh once again if you did enjoy this video and want to help support the channel then leaving a like and subscribing would be very much appreciated i have decided that we shall now colloquially as of this moment refer to mikola as the egg boy anyways later You find me here, no time to waste.